Hi, my name is Mike Moore. I'm a Technical Architect Director with MuleSoft's Customer Success Strategy and Architecture team. Today we're going to look at how we can use OAuth to authenticate a Mule Studio project to Salesforce. Now while Salesforce supports authentication via username and password, many organizations are moving away from sharing name credentials associated with a user and instead are using OAuth login flows. Now if you're not familiar, OAuth is an open protocol that authorizes a client application to access data from a protected resource through the exchange of tokens. These tokens are essentially permissions that are given to the client application. In this case, the resource server or Salesforce can validate the tokens and allow a client application to access a subset of data within your Salesforce org. Now, typically, MuleSoft is going to be used for a data ETL process, an event producer or consumer, or exposing a subset of Salesforce data as a system API. And in these use cases, we commonly refer to them as a system to system integration, where the OAuth JWT bear flow is the most appropriate. This flow will allow you to authorize Mule to access data by using a certificate to sign each of the requests. And this avoids needing to log in interactively each time the systems need to exchange information. It's important to remember that the flow does require the Mule client app to be authorized ahead of time inside of Salesforce. So what we'll look at today is how to set up Salesforce, build a connected app, authorize it for a particular integration user, and then how to configure a Mule sub connector to leverage that Walt JWT flow. So let's get started. Once we've logged into the Salesforce admin console, our first step is to create a certificate to be used in the OAuth JWT process. Go to Setup, and in the search box, type in Cert, then select Certificate and Key Management. Click on Create Self-Signed Certificate. Give the certificate a label and a unique name. Keep the other fields with their default values, and click on Save. On the next screen, Click on Download Certificate. We will provide this file to Salesforce to use to compare to the incoming authentication request from the connector. Click on Security Certificate and Key Management again in the left-hand navigation. In the list of certificates, click on Export to Key Store. We'll use this in the connector to be able to connect to Salesforce. Type in a password and click on Export. Remember where the file was saved because you'll need it again later. When the MuleSoft connector authenticates, it will present the certificate that is stored in the key store. Salesforce will then compare this incoming certificate to the one that's configured in the connected app setup, in addition to the specified principal or user to ensure that the app is authorized to access the API on behalf of the integration user. So now that we've created the certificate, we can create the connected app inside of Salesforce. In the search box on the left, search for app and click on app manager. Then click on new connected app. In the basic information section, fill in the connected app name. The API name field will auto-populate, and also fill in the contact email field. It's also a good practice to populate a description for the purpose of the app. In the API Enable OAuth Settings section, check the Enable OAuth Settings checkbox. Fill in the callback URL field. For our auth type, the callback URL is not needed, but we do need to set a value here. Check the Use Digital Signatures checkbox and click on Choose File, then select the self-signed certificate that you created in the previous section. From the available OAuth scope, select Access and Manage Your Data and perform requests on your behalf at any time. Then click Add to move them to the selected OAuth scopes. I'm also going to add the Wave API as I will eventually use this app for Einstein Analytics. You'll see a message that says that it takes about two to 10 minutes for the changes to take effect. Go ahead and click continue. We're gonna use an existing integration user I've already created, but we need to do two things. We need to change the OAuth policy to allow an admin to pre-authorize the app for users. And we need to create a permission set or edit the profile to provide access to the connected app for the user. In this case, we're going to adjust the integration user profile that I've already configured for this user. Alternatively, you can send a one-time authorization request to Salesforce when you're logged in as the user, but today we're going to use a profile so that we can more cleanly track the access to the connected app. So click on Manage. Then click Edit Policy. Set the OAuth policy so that admin approved users are pre-authorized. 
You'll get a prompt that any existing users may be denied access, but since we do not have any existing users at this point, this will not apply. Now we need to update our profile that is associated with the integration user. Click Manage Profiles to associate the application to the right profile. For my user, it's the API Platform user. Now the connector will be authorized to make API calls on behalf of users with this profile assigned. Now we can switch over to Studio or Flow Designer and configure the connection to Salesforce. But first we need to get the consumer key associated with the Connect apps, so let's go get that. Click Manage Apps, navigate to your connected app, and select View from the menu dropdown. Then copy your key. Now you can shift over to Studio. In this example, here is a sample project set up with the Analytics Connector already added to the project. All we need to do now is add in the configuration. Go into the global elements for the application and select Salesforce Analytics. Then change the connection method to OAuth JWT. Paste in the consumer key that you just copied from Salesforce. Select the key store that you exported earlier. Set the store password or reference a property placeholder. And finally, set the principal, which is the same as the integration user ID. At this point, we can test the connection and confirm access to Salesforce. Awesome, the test passed and it looks like everything is working as expected. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you. Now keep in mind that even though I did use the Salesforce Einstein connector in this demo, the same process would apply if you're using the Salesforce Core Connector or the Salesforce Composite Connector. Thanks for watching.